Hello my friends and welcome to the Monster Type Festival for July 2023 part 3. I'm not sure if I did gain a new subscriber but I think I may, may have so if I did thank you so much whoever that may have been. Um yeah and uh, apparently there's a little bit of an error but I know from last time that doesn't it shouldn't affect anything so I should be all right here just need to get um, to the main screen again but while it's going I'll say um <clears throat> please like share and subscribe and considering that notification bell for regular content um, you can this um, select the balance select personalize if you want to be notified of um, the videos like the most you can also select the balance select all if you just want to be notified of all my content which in the meantime it's master and in the future if I stop playing other games you don't care about you can always feel free to change it later or you can select the balance select none if you're only in this to help me out which is certainly also appreciated as well um I don't need all of my subscribers to be watching my content. If you're just a friend of a subscriber or something, and you actually don't care about Yu-Gi-Oh, well, maybe you can stay subscribed, and then if there's anything in the future that you would enjoy, maybe I'll be doing that. But for now, I want to focus on Master so I can get done with it, since this is one of the longer games. But it's fun, though, so I'm not complaining. Yeah, so apparently a few new missions for the monster type. Oh, and another thing I noticed is that, like, yes, um, the dual live, you can go here and you can watch a specific one. And no matter which category you'll go into, it still does count towards your um, dual live gems for that day. So, I mean, that makes sense. But yeah, for today's video... I'll go through the news, and then after that, I'll show off some replays showing off my decks. And I'll talk a little bit about them. I can't really, like... I, I kind of don't have a lot of the decks right now, because I kind of forgot to save them. But I can go over, like, some of the highlights. Um, and, like, why I think this deck could be a pretty good contender. Um, anyway... Notifications. Looks like. Looks like there's some voting. Um. So. You have the chance of receiving 2,000 gems. But you also get some free stuff. For simp simply for voting. Selected via lottery draw. And receive 2,000 gems. Man. That does, that actually kind of doesn't really seem like a lot if you think about it. Like, that's 20 packs. Like, so that's not like a ton. And you have to get lucky too. If, even if you're lucky, you receive 2,000 gems. There's probably going to be a lot of people voting. I don't know, I guess that's pretty good. It's what they decided. Yeah, and of course, additional missions as you saw... But, like, the additional missions, of course, shouldn't be too hard. You probably will get them done anyway. Just through doing a few duels. But I guess if you already made it to the highest medal, maybe, like, you could do this quicker by playing decks that have actual destruction-based abilities. Like, Hoppy's Feather Duster would probably help. Like, since, like, there's a pretty good chance that the opponent's probably just going to set five back. Well, like, basically, two Hoppies Feather Duster may simply get it done. Because, like, if you can destroy five each with it. Yeah, like, but, like, even if, like, you're destroying four, like, should be pretty easy. And then winning a duel, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's a little bit harder and it's probably a little bit more annoying if you already made it to the end. But I think it, I, I really do think it makes it easier when you um, select your game settings to disable the cross-platform play. 
Though maybe that's like true for like PlayStation because maybe there's less representation. I don't know. It might be true of other systems as well though. Um yeah. Okay, so let's go into the replays now. So I'll go through the replays first and I'll show you what the deck I decided on was. Um so let's look at replays for my own decks. So I th was was it after this? I think it was after this one. Yeah, I think it might have been the yeah, no, I think this is the first one I want to show off. So my opponent's playing the... It looks like they're playing the Lona deck again. Another one with the Fluffle Lona. So I guess you get to see that again. But more importantly, you get to see my deck, which is... Which... Um, I am playing... Oh yeah, Counter Fairies. Um, this is kind of a deck that someone else that like I saw on lot on a video but the problem with with my version of counter phase is like I'm not playing the SRs that he suggested like one of the SRs was a counter trap that got you to like a special summon of like a of one of those high level fairies that people are playing that Archangel I think it was um, and I also don't have the Archangel either so <clears throat> it's a little bit oh yeah and then after this I'm gonna show you how I got the honest because yeah like um like it's pretty easy to get the honest actually I'll show you how I got it after the replay though um yeah so basically um yeah the you don't really need honest if you do build it the intended way but I felt like I kind of did since I'm kind of just trying to play this the unintended way but yeah it's definitely a lot harder you might be able to get some some wins if people get annoyed because of all the counter traps you're playing but yeah like um it's probably gonna be a slow win if they don't concede if you're not playing with the big archangel that has like 2800 um or the x deck synchro one that like can also get to high attack i mean you could maybe like eventually get enough monsters to go into links but like it's definitely easier to go down the Archangel route, like, yeah, and you kind of don't want to get rid of your monsters, because, like, your monsters serve a purpose, like, the monster that you most of the time get with Condemned Witch is actually going to serve a purpose, because it's going to get you draw every time you activate a counter trap. Yeah, so Condemned Witch is good for getting Forbidden Droplet. I was running three, but you could probably just get by with running one. Um, but I already had three because I was playing three from the Zodiac days when I, back when I was act, still playing Zodiacs. Yeah, and so my opponent, I think, is playing the Loner deck. And so I have a bunch of counter traps. Yeah, see, there's the Divine Wrath, but I do get the draw, so it kind of helps pay for it. The Divine Wrath having to discard. Fortunately, I had to discard the Honest, which kind of stinks because I kind of want to keep the Honest, but I didn't want them getting that effect. Also, this is just like adding two cards, so I felt like, hey, yeah, like that's a pretty good one to get rid of. It kind of also gives them the edge imp that they need to make their fusion. And so, at least this has a big enough um defense that like it just can't be easily being over by the fluffle dog so that's pretty nice and then there's another counter trap yeah so now they're going for uh link play but as i said i'm just gonna stop that with the solemn warning also get another draw Divine Wrath because I didn't really need the evenly match. I'm and then I'll just negate the edge and chain. Yeah, Divine Wrath is another um normal, so that's pretty good. And the Solemns like 
I, th I think at least a few of them you can get that from bundles. You can get at least one. I'm not sure if you can get more than that, but like, like you could always use like um lower rarity counter traps if needed. It may not make it as good, but like um, the big ones you definitely want to be playing with are the Archangel counter trap whatever it's called and then um, the actual monster itself which are both SRs and th and that kind of stinks because like they're not really um, they're not usually just playable in any decks they they it they're pretty specific cards so I didn't want to have to do it but luckily I didn't need to I found a different thing I could go with yeah, and Honest is also pretty cool because you can just normal summon it for a little bit extra damage and then put it back in the hand. So even if you are playing with the Archangel, maybe it's not such a bad thing to play with Honest because that big boss monster also happens to be a light. The Archangel um, big boss monsters also happen to be light as well. So, And again, it's pretty easy to get Honest. I'll show you how you're supposed to get it. So that probably makes for the best um, structure deck to buy, like, especially if you're maybe planning to use a deck like this. Yeah, I'll show off the first. I'll show off the counter trap that you kind of really need. I just kind of got lucky. Also, the fact that I was playing against. Uh... Also, the fact that I was playing against. This is not the deck. I'm, I just want to show you the counter trap. So, it's something to do with Sanctuary and Sky. Okay, I'll just go to counter trap. Yeah, but there's like quite a few counter traps that are like pretty cheap too. So, should be able to at least play, I think, maybe one of each of the Solemns though. At least. Like, if you bought the bundles. Which one is it? I think I know it's an SR though. I guess Stock Bribe wouldn't maybe be too bad if you happen to have it. Like the ones with costs, like aren't too bad, because like basically that you have another counter fairy type card that makes it so that you don't have to pay costs. So that's pretty cool. I did happen to have a wiretap though, so I also decided I'll use that. You could also use Ultimate Providence. That's another really good card. Especially like with the fat fairy that doesn't require you to pay costs. Red reboot, probably not the best. Oh yeah, here it is. We both have Parshath. And now I'll show you related cards. So yeah, we both have Parshath is basically how you can bring out these big ones. Maybe you don't actually you you might not you you might not have to use the SR one actually. Um this can like Pretty easy special on itself gets you another counter trap though when it inflicts bow damage, so it's pretty good. But you could probably just do it with rebirth of Parshath and then use one of the lower ready Parshath. The best one probably being Avenging. Um since he has the highest attack out of all of the lower ready um stuff. Yeah, you're not too bad either. And, and see, like the also they they also just have to be like fairies, so they also work pretty well with honest. Like there may not be a lot of times where um the opponent's attack is bigger than 26 or 28, but when when it is, you have honest as backup, so it's pretty nice. And just the fact that you can normal summon honest when you don't need to normal summon anything else. Just get him for some chip damage and then return to your hand afterwards. Like, that's pretty good too. Though, you definitely want to know something Condemned Witch if you have it instead. Because Condemned Witch, once again, adds you the Forbidden Droplets. Or, I guess, like, you could play as some other Forbidden cards if you only have one Forbidden Droplets. You might still want to play three in case you do get more than one copy. Then you'll have like other ads because I'm pretty sure you can only get one from your deck. Anyway, so there's the first deck, and then also I'll show you how I got the um, 
honest. It's actually pretty simple. You do need to use that 1500 gems, so, and honest, definitely not a requirement for that deck. Like, the big requirements is going to be that rebu rebirth um, counter trap at, at the very least. Like, you could, like, make budget options for the counter traps and everything. And all the other counter fairies are pretty, um, are pretty low rarities, so that shouldn't be too hard. But yeah, Rage of Cypher, I think this is where you get the honest. Yeah, this is where you get the honest. So, maybe if you're interested in some of the other cards, or if you're simply interested in using honest, this is definitely the best structure deck. Like, all the other ones don't really have any good fairies or fiends, unfortunately. And the only really good fairy in here is honest. But I decided I'm going to use it so I can show it off. Back to front, though, not too bad I guess like but people don't really play that galaxy cyclone like can be kind of good but people don't really play that either but like this ha does have some pretty good cards for dragon link like star league safer and then this one can be oh wait no but that's a normal yeah star league safer is probably one of the best cards other best cards in here because it's pretty good in dragon link if you're playing that but like a lot of the other cards maybe not too good, but the the link the exceeds are at least um generic, so maybe you can utilize those as well. And of course you get the dark box as well, which does look pretty cool if you're interested in the design. And you only need to use one of the buy one of them for that. You could probably buy it once and just use one honest. And then you also get the deck box as a, another um, bonus. Anyway, so that was the first deck. I'll show off the next deck. Um, which I also decide I'm, I don't really want to use. So here's my opponent's deck. Here's what I'm facing. It's Dark Lords. This is another idea you could use. Like, Nurse Reficule is at least a normal. Ixshell might be a little bit hard to get. Like, this allows you to draw two cards, so it might be a pretty good card. But you can probably just use other ways of drawing. Like, basically, what you want to have here is you want to try to get to Nurse Reficule as, as soon as you can. So that you can set, like, a few cards that, like, um have your opponent gain life points and turn into burn damage and then just like OTK them and a lot of the cards that you're using for that are normals and rares although trying guess is a UR um so yeah there's that yeah so and it might be a little bit hard to like declare which X deck. I'm not sure which one is the safest to declare. Um, maybe... I don't know, like, if you declare fusion, like... Does Labyrinth have any fusion synchros or exceeds? Does... Maybe exceeds is the safest, but then, like, do Fluffles really play a lot of exceeds? Or, like, do, like, Brandon play, play a lot of exceeds? I don't know. I don't know if there's really much like safe option. You could probably just wait until you see what the opponent's playing. Like if they're playing Brandon, then you could play call a fusion. If you see they're playing Fuffle, then you call fusion. If they're seeing pl them pl you them playing Labyrinth, I'm not sure if the Loner deck um plays a lot of Exceeds, but maybe you could play Exceed call Exceed for Labyrinth. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, so that's the kind of thing that kind of stinks. Like, but I think if you just wait, you might be able to get the like the three thousand off a lot there. Evenly match probably not required. Trap trick probably not really required, but it it is more copies of your traps. 
Unfortunately, you can't play Lord of the Heavenly Prison, but you won't be able to activate the trap that turn. It. Yeah, like trap trick probably the best, but like I'm not sure how much required that is. And then Macro Cosmos could be good for like helping us stall out by make by forcing your opponent to have to banish everything. But yeah, definitely not required. Yeah, just whatever like draw cards you have is basically the thing, and then Nurse Reficule is pretty easy. I'm just not sure, like, I mean, like, if you can get, like, the Nurse Reficule up, and then all you really need is, like, three cards, like, three burn cards, since this is 3,000, this is 3,000, and then 2,000, like, that's all you really need. At least three of those, like, maybe you don't have a lot of burn cards, though, like, maybe these are the three best options, so... If so, it might be kind of hard to get off a lot. I'm not ex actually sure how consistent this deck is. But I was hearing it's probably not really that consistent. And the extra deck probably doesn't really matter at all. This, this, this opponent is just playing a bunch of links. Because try and guess, like, um, you can't call links. So, it doesn't matter if you're just playing a bunch of links. But you do still need an extra deck in order to be able to use this card. So anyway, um, let's go into it. Oh yeah, there was a pretty funny way I won against this player. Like, my, my opponent was able to set up, but I had a pretty funny play. Like, um, it's the problem with, like, that, like, basically, like, having to be super dependent on no Reficule. And the fact that you can only have, like, have one out because you're n normal summoning the Nurse Reficule. Does that mean, like, basically any negate on the Nurse Reficule is g it can kind of really hamper their strategy. But you kind of do want to wait until they activate at least one of their burn cards. Um, before negating the Nurse Reficule. Or they could just chain their burn cards. Well, the quote-unquote burn cards in in response and get like the burn off before Nurse Reficule is negated. And then that's not, yeah, see there, yeah, Upsar Goblin, pretty good. It works well with Nurse Reficule. And it can make it so that like maybe you don't need as many of these on the field. But yeah, of course, like, I chain in response to the Forbidden Droplets. Technically, you could also do the Forbidden Droplets and send a trap. That's maybe what I should have done. Because then they couldn't have responded with the other traps. And then it would have been negated and all of the traps. Because all of the, like, quote-unquote burn cards are coming from traps. So yeah, I probably should. If, if I would have just sent the trap, then they wouldn't have been able to do anything. Actually, yeah, that's a pretty smart play. Like, and that was pretty funny there. Which check was I playing? Oh, I was playing the counter fairies again. I just decided I'm going to save that because I thought that was kind of funny. But I think I need a, like, a, a longer game to kind of show off a little bit more of it. Of course, like... There were a lot of games I just lost because, like, I didn't have the Parshath. The, or, or at least the Rebirth of Parshath. Like, I, that's probably the biggest card you need. And so that would be, like, three, at, like, um, sets of, like, 30 SR CP that you would need. So it's up to you if you want to go for it or not. Maybe you could get by running just two, but I think you really want to run three because you really want to get that special summon of one of the big guys out of your deck or X deck. Here's the next replay. Um, this time my opponent's playing another non... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this... Yeah, this looks like another non-loner of the... Um, Labyrinth, but they're still not playing a way to negate, uh, <laughs> to negate like a Hoppy's Feather Dust or even the match. So they still kind of got blown out by a Heavy Dust or Hoppy's Feather Dust or even the match. Like, like if you're gonna be playing Labyrinth, you should probably have a way to 
be able to negate a like a blowout card like labyrinth or i mean um even a match a hoppy's feather duster or even lightning storm obviously it can just get blown out yeah so you probably want to play like solemn judgment with this deck just find some room for three solemn judgments i would say um that's my recommendation like you can probably still win a lot of games without needing that like and if you don't have it or or if you don't even just have the one from the bundle like just play the one like because at least some of the times you can like get the solemn judgment and then be able to like set it so that you aren't completely blown out by hoppy's feather dust or even a match or lightning storm but yeah, this is certainly another deck deck you could play if you had the cards for it. I just didn't really have all the best cards for it. And I kind of showed off, like, me trying to get the deck together. But, like, I didn't have the... I think it's a new one that I didn't have. So, I mean, maybe you don't need to play, but, like, the new one... Wonder if I could play some like this, actually, but I kind of don't want to copy it because I think it would replace the deck I have. Oh yeah, no, I don't have a bunch of Welcome Labyrinths. I only have like one of this card and like zero of this. So yeah, like that was like the big problem. Yeah, I'm not doing those because those are both UIs. Yeah. Okay. If they're playing Dogmatica Punishment, they pro should probably... Or I guess... Yeah, they could have at least played the Natis, but I guess they didn't have the Natis. But yeah, Muckraker is certainly not too bad because all the Labyrinths are fiends. Anyway. Yeah, that probably wouldn't be too bad of a build. Like, um, Maybe if you're missing some of the new ones. You could go with some more something like that. But yeah, for this one, I was... I think I was playing Fluffles this time. Pretty sure I was playing, like, a non-loner Fluffle build. Yeah. I was playing... Oh, wait, no. This time, it's Plunder Patrol. Yeah, so I'm playing Plunder Patrol Runic this time. Oh, yeah, and there was... I got another funny win. Um, basically the funny win I got here was my opponent, um, special summoned the lovely labyrinth and then with this effect, um, they got to destroy one card at random and they hit the one that special summoned. So I could just special summon one of my guys that during my opponent's turn could just special summon one of my plunder patrols from the X deck and I had a lot of plunder patrols in my hand. But, like, them, like, but they didn't know that, but, like, they were thinking, like, oh, man, in case he does, like, could just blow me out by, like, spell summoning the one that gets rid of spells and traps and just get rid of my best spell and trap. Banishing it, too, so, um, which is, like, really good because, like, they have lots of ways of getting their traps back from the graveyard, but not so many ways of getting them out of the banish zone. So yeah, Plunder Patrol, not bad. It is pretty, um... It is pretty expensive, though. And the only thing that I don't really have with the Plunder Patrol is the Field Spell. But I think I've been doing okay without it, like, for the most part. I don't really want to, like, get the Plunder Patrol Field Spell, the Shipyard. Because, um... But I do actually have it. I do actually have the Plum Troll on me. That's the deck I'm sticking with. I don't have the Shipyard, unfortunately. Because that's a U on. I don't really want to craft it. But I th I've, I've been doing pretty okay without it. Um, But yeah, like... And of course, like, a lot of the Runic cards got hit. But they're still playable. And the nice thing about the Runics is that the Hugin, um will discard... So they can help activate some of my um, 
plunder patrols because they like get their effects when they're sent from the hand to the to the graveyard as well. So that's pretty cool. Call by the grave for maybe a little bit more disruption. Maybe I could replace Call by the Grave with like a few more blowout cards for Labyrinth. Like maybe that's actually what I could do. Like how often like do I really need to care about called by? Maybe I could like replace this with like Hoppy's Feather Duster. I don't really know how needed the evenly matches either. But yeah, Hoppy's Feather is probably a really good card to play just for like Labyrinth if if they don't have the Solemn Judgment, it's really good. And you're probably going to be playing against Labyrinth quite a bit. I, Call by the Grave is still pretty good. Um, because they're sending like the some of the furniture cards to the graveyard to get out a trap, but I'm not sure like what the best. Yeah, and I'm like putting in like some of the other like not as good runics just to like help fill out the runic ratios so I can like get those draws with the fountain. Yeah, and plunder patrol. I mean the the extra deck stuff alone has ways to deal with different things. Like this one can deal with effect monsters. This um the brand can deal with spells and traps. Though you do need to have your opponent having specific attribute, which kind of stinks. This one can deal with monster effects as well. So yeah. Maybe you don't need to play Red Reboot. I'm not sure. Maybe I shouldn't play Red Reboot. Maybe what I can do is I can just get rid of the red reboots and just do it like that I can try that I think that should be fine because even the match also can take care of labyrinths of course if you do have the shipyard maybe you could like minus the infinite impermanence and then just do two shipyards you'll have 40 41 cards but that's okay I'm trying to stick to 40 though because um because I don't have the shipyard, so it may be a little bit less consistent for me. But I still feel like it's consistent enough that like the shipyard I'm not really missing a lot of the times. Although I the shipyard also helps for like some of your plunder patrols that like um adds a plunder patrol card or spell a trap from your deck afterwards. Like having the shipyard would be a few extra plunder patrol spell or traps but whatever it also give you a few more plunder patrol names for the for these guys since you need to discard plunder patrol in order to get their effects yeah i mean maybe if nothing else i could also just have a few plunder patrol names probably the best <laughs> where i just play maybe an extra copy of black eyes actually that might be better yeah I think I'll do that okay so there's that deck yeah and you you can see that is pretty expensive though even without the shipyard and like the extra deck cards are kind of needed like maybe not in these ratios but yeah, like it's it's probably gonna be pretty expensive no matter what, unless you already happen to have a plum patrol. I already happen to have a lot of the good plum patrols, so I'm fine with it. And I already had runics back when I was playing them with sprites, so I was fine with that too. So this price, this this basically seemed like the best deck for me. Be and and I heard about this from a podcast. From one of Team APS's podcasts that did mention that hey, Plunder Patrols, uh, the, they are all fiends, even the X deck monsters. That's pretty cool. Anyway, there's the second deck, and now I'll show the final deck.
Yeah, but of course, if you do have the shipyard, definitely play the shipyard. But you don't really need it. But it would make the deck a lot better. And it's pretty easy to like get to it even without terraforming. Maybe you could just stick to one shipyard since it's fairly easy to get to even without terraforming. But I think if you're going to play, you might want to just make two. I don't know. I don't even want to craft one though because like I'm kind of trying to save my CP. I'm like, if I don't need it, why do I want to craft it? Like, I'm thinking like that. I think this is the one where I was playing Fluffles, maybe. Yeah, this is one of those Time Lord decks. But this guy is focusing a lot more heavily on the Time Lords. So this is just another instance of Time Lords that you could play. But as you can see, a lot of the Time Lords are fairly cheap. So maybe you could just play Time Lords. Like... Really, it's just a Time Maiden. That's an SR, but you probably don't need to really play her. Um, but yeah, like, as you can see, it's fairly cheap. Like, you probably don't need, like, these SR cards. Like, even these ones, like, that kind of helps out the Time Lords. They're also cheap. They're also low ready. These probably don't matter too much either. Yeah, so, like, making a Time Lord deck, it would be pretty cheap. I'm not sure how good it is. But it's nice that it's a, more of a budget build for the event. So, yeah, maybe you could try out some kind of Time Lord deck. If you really want to go budget. But I think I'm sticking with the uh, Plunder Patrols. And a, a lot of the times, also, with Plunder Patrol, is that, like, if you set up, like... Uh, like a board where like you basically can like um go into one of your plunder patrol exceeds like either or exact monsters either during your turn or your opponent's turn they might just end up conceding oh apparently i didn't actually get a replay of the fluffles but yeah okay so i guess i'll just say it. like the thing about fluffles is that like a lot of their main deck cards are fairly cheap Really, the only expensive card that you kind of need to play is the Patchwork. And then a few of the Exodet cards are also kind of like high rarities. But you really only need to play like one of each of, of two of the best ones. I think, I know one of them is Whale. And the other one I think might be like Kraken or something. And I think those are the two that you really want to play. Yeah, but it's fairly cheap. You could also combine them with other fusion strategies. Um, if you wanted to. Um, since the one does you get you a polymerization. And also the edge imp is a dark. So maybe if you have like fusion strategies that call for a dark. Like. But like getting yourself a polymerization is pretty good. Like a polymerization is pretty um, versatile. Anyway. I'm going to play it. Yeah this is another one. Showing off more of the potential. Going first. Going for Dispelling. Going for Hugin. Yeah, and that was all before my main phase. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So now I can go for the Slumber. And then I can get three. Draw three, so that's pretty nice. Also, the extra draws aren't bad. Infinite permanence to negate the effect. I'm not sure if my opponent could have canceled the attack or not. But yeah, again, giving me a kaiju doesn't really matter because I still have the runic side. So that's another nice thing there. About that, about having the runic side of things, and also like, um, you do have the spe other spell and trap removal in the form of one of the runic cards as well, so that's pretty nice. Yeah, but this will be the last replay, and I think I'm just gonna do. Well, actually, I can probably do like um a few pack openings. I'll do a few for the legacy pack. Yeah. I'll do a few pack openings for Legacy Pack now. 
Yeah, and of course, if you have ideas that you could play with the deck, especially maybe if you have more budget ideas that could be played, like definitely um, leave them down in the comments because I wouldn't. I'm probably sticking to Plunder Patrols unless I hear something way better. But yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the thing about Legacy Pack. I would have to open 100. Well, I guess I'll just have to go quick then. Let's see if I gain good stuff. I got another Ib. I'm not sure how good that is, though. Of course, reacting could be good. Um, maybe if the Redox... I, I think the Redox might still be banned, though. But maybe if it becomes unbanned, it would, could be pretty good. Call the Soul is pretty good for... Um, dual links, but not so much here because, like, in dual links, since you have 4,000 starting, like, that means a lot more targets. Um, hope for escape. I don't think too bad for, like, if you want to play another draw card for decks that like to lower their life points, like Dynamorphias. Um, we'll re reassembly, not too bad for Wood Legacy. Of course, these are the rares. Ooh, I got a hollow element to heal Steam Healer. That's nice. Yeah, but a lot of these rares, um, some of them might be pretty good. Like, this is pretty good, but I, like, this might become good again, like, once the, um, once that fusion, the Sanctifier Dragon for um, Despia comes out. Because that basically gives you another way to spec some monsters on one on your side, one of your opponents. Has to be exactly two, but like that should be pretty easy to get. Link Rebo, Bow Baboon. Ooh, I got a hollow. Oh, wait, no, I thought I did. No, I didn't get a hollow hardly on dog though. Oh yeah, virus cannon. Was this a card that was played against Kaiba? It's cheese to play this. I'm not sure. Pentastag, of course, pretty good. It gives you um, monsters that I think it points to piercing, which isn't too bad. Sacred cane used to be pretty good because you get to simply draw a card. That was pretty nice. Just by special summoning it. I don't think it's a hot, it's a once per turn or anything. So if you special summon multiples, you could draw multiple cards. But you have like a lot of ways of drawing cards nowadays. Searching for specific cards is a lot better. A lot of, a lot of normals now. Stuffed animal has a pretty cool artwork, I think. And it's a hollow, that's nice. Oh uh, yeah, the new support. Is anyone gonna be playing? Has anyone tried the illusions? I don't think they're too bad. Like, their combos seem to be pretty good. They seem to be fairly consistent. Um, I'm not sure how good the deck is, but yeah, definitely if anyone's playing, planning to play illusions, you can let me know. I hear that you can also like combine them with other fusion strategies as well. Like namely like Despia is like probably the biggest one that people are thinking about. Okay, so there we go. So there's the cards. Um I think uh these maybe my favorite I guess I could go favorite for each rarity. My favorite SR I don't know, I guess Reactin could be good eventually like um if redox gets unbanned i don't know like maybe you could like play them um them too it's pretty cool that reacting is still off the ban list um out of all the rares i don't know i guess light ray, ray gear freed if i decide to He's pretty good with like heavy light decks. Um, I do like Foggy Force Field though, just because of the artwork. 
And then for the normals. Hmm. I don't know. I guess misjudge because like um brings me back to like that festival. The festival with the coin flip and dice roll. Like maybe some people didn't like it, but I think I really liked it. I think they did a pretty good job with that one. Um But yeah, Wild Tornado um, could be pretty good if you're playing a deck that once their cards destroyed, then get another destroy of a face up card. Um, you could also just trigger it yourself. So, um, with like some of the ancient gear cards, for example, to maybe get even more like destruction, like get get a bonus from like whatever you're destroying it with. So that's pretty cool. Um. Yeah, and then, oh yeah, Saber Source also was pretty good back in the day with when, like, Rescue Rabbit going into, like, two Saber Source and then using them for, like, um, going in that one rank four dinosaur was a thing. Um, that was pretty good. Yeah, and of course, like, if anyone has any, like, lore they want to share with any of these cards, um, maybe if they want to say their favorite ca card or set of cards, like, you can feel free. Um, anyway, I'll, um, be sure to leave, um, the proper, um, things like the verse and the thank yous in the description. But for now, just say quick thank yous to those who stayed for any of the event related stuff, the festival related stuff. Or the pack opening related stuff. If you want more specific thank yous, you can feel free to look in the description. Hopefully by the end of the week, I'll try to get that there. As long as well as for the other video that I missed, the like la last video that I don't have the description up, I'll try to get that by the end of the week. And also, um, I'll have the and also the verse um, discussion in the pin comment for those who want to like discuss the verse a little bit and maybe I'll share my thoughts on it like on like the one from the the last video and maybe and maybe this one anyway bye everyone I hope you enjoyed